the, does any any lack of money um uh, grow up shape your view about money today yes yes, yes. Uh, for example remember when i was a kid and uh, all my other um, fellow mates were buying uh, 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 the wonderful Nike shoes. Actually, mm. the, the, there's a chapter in my book where, mm. where I talk about uh, uh, the first Nike shoes in 1995. Yeah. These were my dream shoes. I loved yeah. those shoes. I wanted them. And I went to my dad and said, hey, dad, I want those shoes. They're amazing. I mean, they're the Nike Air, Air Max, mm. the first pair of Nike Air Max. Mm. And the first response of my dad is, oh, we can't afford it. Too expensive. Right. Too expensive. So what happened? My dad had an impact in me mm. that built in me a pattern of uh, scarcity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't afford it. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, my mom was the opposite. My mom was, well, at the moment, it's not the right thing to do. It doesn't fit the budget. Mm -hmm. So my mom was budgeting and planning. My dad was immediately, <clears throat> no, we can't mm -hmm. afford it. We can't do it. So mm -hmm. I can tell right now that uh, um, there was a lot of grace. Because mm -hmm. there were moments where uh, we didn't have money at home. Wow. But yet, my mom never made it a weight on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. She was always kind of covering it up. And um, mm -hmm. one of the greatest lessons I learned from my mom is always plan for the next step. Now, wow. everybody now talks of planning for the rainy days. I mm -hmm. don't like that. Because mm -hmm. if you're planning for the rainy days, it means you are going towards rainy days. You are focusing on rainy days. You yes. are searching for rainy days. And mm -hmm. for sure, I bet those rainy days will come yeah. in the moment you don't expect it. But mm -hmm. if you develop the mindset of, okay, how can I be a good steward with my money? Mm -hmm. How can I diligently make it sure for it to work out for me? How mm -hmm. can I pay myself first? Mm -hmm. Whenever I get any income, how can I set up something which is aside for me? Mm -hmm. Now, growing up in Italy, Italy has a mindset of saving. Mm -hmm. Everybody saves. Mm -hmm. But then they save the money and they keep it and keep it in the banks and all those things, which then the money loses value because of inflation. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I realized, okay, budgeting, my mom taught me that I'm good at it. But now, what's the next level? Mm -hmm. The next level was to start on finding ways on how to invest it in a smarter way. So I had to shift my mindset growing up with my dad, telling mm -hmm. me we can't afford it, it's too expensive, mm -hmm. to developing more and more the healthy mindset of my mom of, okay, is it in the budget? Is, is it something that we have planned? We cannot mm -hmm. just wake up and be excited and just go and buy anything. Is it planned? Is it budgeted? What are we going to do? So, yes, mm -hmm. I grew up in a mindset where there was this contradiction always. My mom mm -hmm. was planning and budgeting. My dad was always, no, we can't afford it. We can't do now, it. You started your real business um, at the age 23. Can you share what inspired you to take the entrepreneurial path and how that led you? To your career in high performance coaching well I, I realized actually it is really interesting because i was at uni and mm -hmm. uh, i had failed already a couple of other businesses mm -hmm. and when i was at uni i was there thinking okay so my professor is earning ten thousand euro a month mm -hmm. so he's making 120k a year mm -hmm. i mean it's gonna take him about 10 years to make a million Mm -hmm. There must be a faster way to do that. Mm. Then I realized, mm -hmm. I realized that uh, whenever you have a salary, you have a cap on yourself. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting as a business owner, or even better, as an investor, there is no level of cap. You mm -hmm. choose what you want. So that's the moment where I decided I never want to be an employee. Wow. All my other friends, even my brother, all of them did all the steps. 
They went mm-hmm. to uni, they graduated, they got a good job, they got mm-hmm. a mortgage for a house that mm-hmm. still now they're paying mm-hmm. and they're trying. Correct. Mm-hmm. So I realized that the fastest way for you to, to, to live your life in the fullest mm-hmm. is to have your own business. Yeah, absolutely. Number one, because having your own business allows you to discover yourself. Yeah. You can never discover yourself if you are working for somebody else. Yeah. Now, I'm not telling everybody to drop your jobs and go and open a business, mm-hmm. but it's all about mindset. The mm-hmm. entrepreneur mindset is a mindset that allows you to identify problems, find solutions, how to overcome them, build up a team, and start mm-hmm. adding value in the market. This mm-hmm. is the principle. And I love that. I like that formula because what you're saying there resonates with me, actually. Um, For me, I see it that way, as well as looking at my manager working long, long hours, traveling countries to countries and thinking she's doing all this work, but only to earn this amount of money. And I said to my imagine if she was doing this for her own business, right? There's no cap, as you've just said. She can earn as much as she could possibly want, basically. So I really resonate. It's all about you wanted to take control of your own future and control of where you want to be in the future but working for someone i don't think will get you there you might want to get experience and then walk away from it and do your own thing that would allow you but discovering yourself that that's a very key you've talked about that because once you started your business you're going to be stretched out going through your superpowers to extract things to make it work and it really gets you to be in a position where you can control your future i really like that question so let's look at high performance coaching because that's what you some of the businesses that you run. How do you define yeah. high performance coaching and what sets it apart from other form of other form of coaching? Okay, first of all, I I, I respect all the other forms of coaching because uh, um, there are niches and specific areas that you may need to work on. But the reason why I dived into high performance coaching is always because of the question, how is it possible that that person has achieved those results? What has made him do it? What type of mindset, what type of preparation, what type of knowledge, what type of connections did they develop in order to achieve a remarkable result? Mm -hmm. So I dived into that. And by diving into that, I realized that it all depends on me. And there are certain elements that are the foundations of high performance. Mm-hmm. Number one is your movement. How do you move? How do you show up yourself? Mm-hmm. For example, uh, Rahim, if you go to a meeting and mm-hmm. in this meeting, it's an important meeting and the person you are negotiating that deal is um, shakes his hand in a lousy way with Mm -hmm. no energy, immediately you have a perspective of, okay, I'm going to close this deal really quickly. Oh, wait a minute, I don't want to do a deal with this person. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of his posture, because of his move, because of how he's showing up um, externally. Yeah. And then another element is uh, memory. Mm -hmm. You see, most of us, because something didn't work out in one area, Mm -hmm. We then create um, um, a constant hard disk. So every Mm -hmm. time we go to a meeting, we always have a flashback. Oh, last time the meeting with Bob didn't go the right way. Now I'm going to meet Rahim. It's going to happen the same thing. So most Mm -hmm. of the times our past memory is conditioning the way we act. Mm -hmm. Another element is our message. How is our communication? How is my internal private communication? Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you one thing. The most important conversation you have during the day is with yourself. What are Mm -hmm. you telling yourself? Are you telling Mm -hmm. yourself, come on, Moses, you have overcome that. You can also do this. Come on, Moses. What you said was total BS. Mm -hmm. Change it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because your private conversation reflects the external conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the last element, the fourth element is measure. You Mm -hmm. cannot manage what you don't measure. True. So what do I mean by that? These are the four elements that allowed me to work with uh, Yvette Goranova, a Mm -hmm. karate 
um, competitor of a small country, Bulgaria, who went from eight months of zero results. Mm -hmm. And on the last day of getting the ticket to go to Tokyo, exactly 50 days before the Olympic Games, she managed to get the last ticket. And wow. I worked with her only one hour and a half. Wow. One hour and a half, we managed to shift all the eight months of the past memory, mm -hmm. all the auto-sabotaging conversation she had inside, mm -hmm. and we managed to get the ticket. And then we worked on going to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the story, fast forwarding, she got the gold Olympic medal in karate. The first wow. gold Olympic medal in the history of the Olympic Games. And uh, yeah. also mentioned here in the book, there mm -hmm. she is. Oh, bless her. There she is. And yeah. uh, so I end up working with athletes, uh, with celebrities. Um, sometimes also I receive calls from politicians that need something. So I believe that um, high performance coaching is the fastest way for you to get out and develop the potential that is sleeping inside of you. Fantastic. Now, let, me, let, Love. Let, let me be clear. Mm -hmm. As a coach, I don't do anything special. But as a coach, I allow you to bring out what you've got inside. And the only thing I do is give you perspectives. Mm -hmm. And then you need to take ownership and decide what to do and Brilliant. a tip for everybody if your coach is telling you what to do then you become addicted to your coach my clients are not addicted to me actually my mm -hmm. clients come work with me go out there in the world and then when they need they come back they are not addicted to me mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i provide the tools i give them perspectives and then they take ownership of their decisions Fantastic. And that's when they get into their high performance.